Hey guys, I'm Tammy and I am an indoor playground owner here in Sacramento, California. And this is where I talk to you guys a little bit about the struggles and the triumphs of owning an indoor playground. Uh, I started this playground about three years ago and I'm just kind of like sharing my knowledge about my journey and the things that I've learned along the way. So today I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about payment disputes because this week I was dealing with a payment dispute. Out of the three years, three, we've been open about two and a half years um, that we've been in business we've had a total of six payment disputes and so out of thousands and thousands of transactions um, i think that is pretty good although i don't really know what the the ratio is or what's good or bad regarding payments disputes but i want to talk to you guys a little bit about payment dispute the process uh, and what happens after the fact and pay and payment disputes that i've won and payment disputes that i've lost okay believe it or not i've had to payment disputes from anywhere between 12 fifth twelve dollars and fifty cents which is absolutely ridiculous i think um especially if you come into play and i have video footage of you playing i don't know how or why you would dispute a open play charge um, but i've had that and i've also had payment disputes all the way till like a 600 hundred dollar payment dispute um so let me talk to you guys a little bit about the ones that i the one that i act the one the two that i've actually won okay one of them um, was for a birthday party. She was not satisfied with her birthday party and she, mostly she wasn't satisfied with the character. And she basically, you know, sent in a payment dispute regarding it and, you know, s said that she didn't receive the services the way that she expected. Uh, well, I won that dispute and it was mostly because I had a lot of evidence, a lot of emails and stuff like that backing up the fact that she stated that she, her daughter had a great time at the party and she was just unsatisfied with one item of the party transaction. I think that as far as payment disputes go, uh, as long as you can prove that you provided them the service, um, it really doesn't matter if they are satisfied or not satisfied with it. That has not really nothing to do with the payment itself. It's that you provide the service that you said you were gonna provide and basically that's it, okay? Um, it also showed in the payment dispute that I tried my best to, you know, accommodate that customer as much as I could. Um, so I think that really helps with the process too. So with, the, with that payment dispute, I had a contract that stated that she received service from us. And I also, I also had several email backups showing that she said in her emails that she received services from us. So those actually really helped me win that dispute. The other dispute that I won was a $12.50 one, and it really wasn't because I won, and I was kind of disappointed about that because I really wanted to send in my evidence showing that we provided that service because I had video footage of that particular customer in our facility, enjoying the facility, um, and I wanted to send that video evidence in. But uh, because I use Square as my point of sale system, one of the great things about Square is that they actually help you with a chargeback or a payment dispute. Um, and in that case, Square basically said, the dispute is such a small amount and you've had such a great sales record with us that we're just gonna help you and cover that charge. So the great thing with Square is that if you have a payment dispute and you can prove that you you know, did everything on your end um, to provide that service or to check the identity of that person, uh, then um, they will cover that charge back up to a certain amount. Um, so make sure you check on that when you are, you know, considering on who you're working as with your point of sale. Okay, let's talk about the payment disputes that I lost. Okay, a couple, um, a few of them were actually people who bought special event tickets and you know, for some one reason or the other, they decided they had buyer's remorse and they decided to go ahead and do a charge back on their credit card regarding their buyer's remorse. So um, those I didn't win just because the special event didn't happen yet, even though on our special event it says that it's non-refundable. Um, so yeah, so the event didn't happen yet. I didn't have any proof that they were there that we provided that service yet. And then also at that, at that time too, Square wasn't collecting all the info regarding like their address, and their phone number, and things like that. Right now, Square just switched over to a new online payment system and it is asking them all that questions, asking them to enter in all that information. That's very, very helpful um, later on during your dispute process because the disputer will be asking you how, what you did to verify this person's identity and any information you can give them as far as the address goes, their phone number, um, basically kind of, 
identifies that they were the ones that entered in that transaction. They gave authorization for it. Uh, so that's really helpful upfront if your online payment system can ask them for as much information as they can. So that way, if they do dispute it, you can say, well, you know, it was them. They verified that charge because they entered in all this information. If a payment dispute happens to you, um, what to do um, to help fight that payment dispute? So obviously, um, this also helps in prevention as well. Uh, so having a contract for your birthday parties is really, really important or for any really service that you have, uh, just because then you can show that contract saying, hey, they agreed to this, they signed to it, um, they verified all their information and they agreed to a certain package or a certain amount or whatever. So I am authorized to charge this amount, basically. Um, Getting a picture ID um, is really important. I feel like if I continue to have um, the same problems that I've been having um, with these foods, I mean, I don't have that many. I feel like this last one, um, it was like six months between one payment dispute to another payment dispute. So I don't get them very often, but if it became a recurring problem that I would basically say, hey, for every payment that you take over a certain amount of money, um, we need to get a picture ID or something like that. So taking maybe like a picture of the ID on your phone or something like that, or getting a photocopy of the picture ID to put under the contract is ideal just in case something happens in the past, okay? Um, any kind of recorded voicemails you have. I think one of the biggest problems I have is when people are calling to book a party and they're giving us payment information over the phone, we have no, data um, to dispute that charge or to send back saying, hey, they actually called over the phone and verified all that information with us over the phone. So we don't have any recordings or anything like that. The only way you can get a recording really is by voicemail. So in that aspect, I do prefer emails um, over phone conversations. I know some people prefer phone conversations, but I actually prefer emails just because you have some sort of data in case something were to arise that you need to send back for this type of information. Um, so yeah, just making sure that you save all the information until even months after the party is over is really ideal. Um, so the problems that I've always had a problem with where I felt like maybe the parents complained or they just didn't like the service or something like that, I always save their information um, so that way I can you know, get back to it later and then send that over to them. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more information in case you ever have a dispute that arises in your indoor playground. Um, you could always follow me on Instagram if you want to ever catch up on any kind of behind the scenes videos. And sometimes I do a live and kind of just give you a real time up to date on what's happening in the play space, like what's happening this week, today, my goals stay, things like that. So that way you can kind of get a real time expectation of what it's like to actually be in the thick of owning a playground. Um, my handle is at PlaySpace Owner. And make sure to subscribe to this channel to get more tips and tricks. Talk to you next time.